All right, hello all you people out there. This is Michael the Toon Half Stooges, and I'm sorry in advance if I sound tired in this video because I'm around like four and a half hours of sleep. But anyway, grids, another one of the data structure types in the wonderful world of Game Maker. I do think it's one of the ones that people use less frequently, but I'm going to be talking about it anyway. So grids are basically two-dimensional arrays. Their primary purpose is to store data in the form of numbers, not strings, although I believe they can store strings. I'm not sure I'll put that in an annotation on the screen right now. But anyway, statistical purposes. You can put a bunch of data in the, uh, in the grid. You can manipulate the data. You can do math on the data. You can, uh, you can do statistics on the data. This here, this little crazy looking thing that I've just gone and um, minimized everything else on my screen with apparently. Uh, this is a little program that I wrote here and it's um, a graphical representation of grids and how they work. So I'm going to select a region here and the first thing I'm going to do is set the data. So I'm going to set this to say 100. And the colors, by the way, in the grid are basically the hue value of the numbers. So between 0 and 255, uh, if I were to put in 255, that would also be a light red. They're not the full colors, they're somewhat lighter because that would make it really hard to see. But uh, in any case, there's a couple of values in here. I'm going to fill this up a little bit. There we go. That's nice and messy. So uh, what else we can do? We can also deal with circles, by the way, and you can set the uh, set some data in a circle. Let's make this. What do I want to do? How about 25? Uh, that's uh, I have a bunch of 25s in there already. Whatever. You can also multiply the data. So let me select another region. I don't like working with circles when I do these examples. I don't know. They're just harder to see or something. So I'm going to be working with squares. But let's multiply this all by two. And we have a couple of values that are greater than 255, as I mentioned before. And the color is just the modulo of that and 255, but whatever. That's all math. Don't concern yourself with that more than you have to. Anyway, you can, if you're wondering, also use, uh, say, fractions. So we're going to, let's, let's divide that all by 5.2, uh, multiplying it by one-fifth, and it works with no issue. Uh, another thing you can do is you can do statistical, I guess, uh, experiments on the data in the graph. So uh, you can find the minimum. And the minimum is zero. Uh, you can also find the maximum, but I don't really think uh, I need to show that. Uh, the average, also known as the mean, if you come from the world of statistics, statistics land. I can't believe I just said that. I told you I was tired. It's apparently 23 and 3 quarters, more or less. I'm not going to whip out a calculator and verify that. I'm going to take the computer's word for it. And the sum. So the sum of all the values inside this grid is apparently 36.59. And once again, I'm not going to whip out a calculator and verify that. You can if you want to. Now the other thing that these uh, that these grids can do is check if things exist in them, which is pretty cool. Instead of say having to uh, iterate over all of the values in a selected region or circle or whatever, and see if something exists in there, you can just uh, you can just call a couple function functions on it and see if the value, let's say 25, exists. And Game Maker's grids also have the ability to tell you where in the selected region the first one of a value it finds is, and for example, that one said what, 2, 5 as the coordinates, what was it? Uh, check in region, it's 1, and uh, 25, I said, uh, 6, 2, okay, I can count, and that would be this, uh, that thing in the selection there over there, so one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 0, 1, 2 is the coordinates of the first one that it finds. So that's all pretty cool, now it's time to go and work with code, so I'm going to be opening up this here. And most of the code in this project, and yes, I think I mentioned this before, but I will be putting this available for download in the description of this video. Uh, most of the code in here is actually just graphical stuff and math for working with like the blue selection area and stuff. Uh, these things here that opened up my, on my other monitor, those are basically uh, switches to tell the program if you're working with squares or circles and stuff like that. The ones that we're interested in, I suppose, and I wish these would stop opening on my other monitor, go away. I mean, whatever. These four here, the ones that are really interesting that have the grid code in them. And user defined zero just happens to be uh, what happens when you click the mouse on them. I don't know why I designed it like that, but uh, that's what happens. But let's go with set first. And don't worry about things like this that you will be seeing uh, quite often if circle is uh, selected or if rectangle is selected. Though, try not to worry too much about uh, all these star i's and star j's and star radii uh, that you'll probably be seeing in this code because, once again, that's just uh, the game's marker. Well, I, I really shouldn't call it a game, but the program's marker for where 
uh, the blue selected region starts and ends. But quite simply, to set a value in a grid, you're going to be saying DS grid set disk or DS grid set region. And disk will take uh, a couple parameters. There's the grid, obviously, that you're working with. Uh, I don't think I have to mention that because that's how all the data structure uh, functions work in, uh, in Game Maker. There's a starting X and starting Y position. So that would be literally on the, uh, on the grid that you saw, the X and the Y. And there's the radius. And that is the radius for which uh, everything inside is to get filled with the new value. And in this case, the new value happens to be what you get when you, uh, when you ask the user for a pop-up with a number in it. I don't think what I said just made sense, but that's what happens. Get integer isn't that complicated. And it's similar with get, uh, with set region. You have start x, start y. I called them i and j so they wouldn't get too confused um, with actual coordinates on the screen, actual pixels on the screen, rather. And here there's an end x and end y. And the minus 1 is, once again, just graphical stuff because uh, I wanted the rectangle to include the last values in the grid and not, uh, not have it go one further. So that's pretty simple. Um, let's see, that's set. Uh, next we're going to go to multiply, and I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. But once again, it's multiply disk. This is almost identical to the other, um, to set disk and set region. You have the same parameters, but at the end, instead of the, uh, the value that you're setting, you have the scale factor. So that's pretty simple. Now let's get rid of that. Stats. This is the fun one. At least I think so, because I like stats. But I'm going to, screw that, I'm just going to click that full screen. So the program is going to ask you if, uh, which operation you want to perform on the selected region. And you could go and split this up into different uh, clickable objects if you want to, but I chose not to because I don't really want to like have 5 million icons on the screen. But to get the minimum, uh, you just ask DS grid get disk minimum or get region minimum, or not region minimum, DS grid get minimum, uh, because it's automatically region because asking for the minimum of exactly one value really wouldn't make very much sense. And uh, once again, this is pretty similar to set and multiply, except that you don't even have the value that you're looking for because that is uh, that happens to be exactly what the program is returning to you. That's what you're trying to find by using this function. And it's the same thing for maximum and uh, mean, also known as average, and sum. So that's pretty simple. Once again, there's a fly buzzing around my room. I really wish it would go away. The last one, uh, check to see if it exists. This one's a little bit more complicated than the other ones, but it's really still not that bad. So I use uh, two functions here, three actually, uh, three functions here, and these these function names are getting increasingly longer. But ds grid value disk exists, and that's a mouthful, but this is just going to be finding, it's more or less the opposite of minimum and maximum, but it returns true or false uh, whether or not I need to move this uh, recording banner out of there. But it returns true if the value that you uh, ask it for is in the selected region and false otherwise. And once again it works for disks and square regions. And these two here, ds grid value disk x and ds grid value disk y, I think I tripped over those words there but uh, who really cares, they're on the screen, you can read them I hope. And these two are similar to disk exists and region exists and whatever, except that it returns the coordinate of the first value that it finds. Except these return the uh, the x and the y coordinates in the grid of the first value of uh, of in this case t that you get from the user that the uh, the computer finds. So that's a basic search. Anyway, there is actually a one more basic math operation that you can do, and that's adding. I'm going to assume that at least a couple of people watching this will be wondering why I didn't mention that. That was actually an accident, but right before I started recording, I decided that instead of adding it myself real quick, I'd, uh, I'd make it a homework assignment of sorts for whoever wants to do that. Uh, add another button, duplicate. You can just uh, hit, basically hit duplicate on one of these, and you can go and edit the code inside, and, uh, and do instead of... I need multiply, and I don't know, instead of say multiply, hit add. And that'll be at least a little bit of a work to do with these. Anyway, I'm going to open up this. And this here in the manual is pretty comprehensive. It's basically everything that I've said in this video already. But I would still recommend going through and uh, having a look at it if you want to. The last thing I'm going to say here is that specific to grids, there is a special way that you can access just the values inside them. 
So in this case, um, I, this is a picture and I can't highlight it. But if I wanted to get the uh, the value four that's in the upper left of this right click drop down on the screen here, I could go and say uh, something similar to an array and just use a, a square bracket notation to grab the value out of it. It's a bit quicker than just calling grid get on it and hopefully a little bit easier uh, to read when you're programming. But as usual, thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next time.